Good afternoon, everyone. Respected Principal Ma'am, my dear colleagues, students, welcome you to today's webinar titled, What a Waste, Time to Rethink. Does this topic intrigue you? If yes, this webinar is definitely for you. Plastic pollution has become one of the most pressing environmental issues. Disposable plastic products overwhelms the world's ability to deal with the disposal. While it is likely to be impossible to eliminate plastic completely from our lives, there are steps which can be taken to reduce the amount which we are using. Today we are honored to have amongst us two environment enthusiasts who will share their experiences and initiatives in the field of environment sustainability. First of all, I would like to welcome Shir Shendu Shekhar Das, founder of the, Mil the Midway Journey. Thank you, ma'am. The, Mid the Midway Journey is an organization that believes in the power of conscious citizens to bring solutions to real problems of the planet. An initiative that was started in June 2018, it strives for the betterment of the environment at a grassroots level. The primary focus of the initiative is to spread awareness and educate masses, motivating them to take steps on an individual level to fight the global waste crisis. Presently, the Midway Journey is conducting a campaign titled Power of 300 to raise awareness about plastic waste recycling and its importance in the time of COVID-19. I would now like to introduce our second speaker, Simi Batra. Simi Batra is an environment enthusiast and believes in the theory of coexistence. Holding a master's degree in communication studies, Simi has been actively involved in projects and programs related to creating awareness about sustainability and tackling the plastic pollution menace. She aims at bringing self-regulation and inculcating a sense of responsibility towards the environment as a part of the various developmental stages of every individual. Shekhar and Simi, we are honored to have you among us today. To find a solution, we need to identify and understand the problem. So, Shekhar, could you elaborate on the type of waste that are being generated on a daily basis? Uh, yeah, I shall talk about that. Thank you very much for the kind introduction, ma'am. Um, I would love to share my screen. I have a PPT from which I would love to share. Can I do that? Sure. Um, okay, I'll just uh, uh, I hope uh, it's viewable and yes. I'm audible clearly. Okay, so I'll just go ahead with this question. That uh, coming to the very first kind of waste, when we talk about waste, the very first thing that we start talking about is plastic, right? So. Um, and I, I would also like that there are many people I have seen who are attending as of now this webinar. So I would really request you all to use the chat box because I really love when it's more interactive. So we today we are using plastic because there are so many good qualities of plastic, right? That it's water resistant, it's lightweight. Today I'm communicating with this earphone, the laptop I'm using, everything, the cell phone I'm using, there are plastics everywhere. From morning that I wake up until night I'm going to sleep, I'm using so many different kinds of plastic. The satellites that's moving in the space the, and everything around us, mostly we are using plastic. So um, as I start now, I'd love to, you know, put the first question that like, why do you all think plastic came into our life? As per historically I'm speaking, why did even plastics come into our lives? Means 
was it for some good reason good for the environment or bad you can use g for good and b for bad i would just like to you know if you could reply in the chat box so that i can understand uh, what do you think about it um, just use a g for good and b for bad i'm not speaking about today the present time right when it was introduced when it was invented for the first time so why did we even need it at the first place was it for a very good reason or for a bad reason okay i have got two replies let's get interactive you know uh, yeah i am getting replies three goods i have got okay i am getting goods plastic is having a very good report card over here few b's but mostly g's so today we see that you know mostly people are saying quite a lot bad about plastic but as i always say in most of my webinars i think that if plastic was a human being attending this webinar he or she would have felt so good to see so many goods about him or her right so going to the point so those who are saying it as good again i'll go for my second question can any one of you write in a small line why you think plastic was introduced for the first time i'll take 60 seconds for this can any one of you just type in the chat box why do you think plastic came because most of you are writing as good few as bad so why good or bad uh and people are typing so you can take few seconds for that okay i think i'm getting things to carry things okay to help us in our day to day life okay any more okay so to so keep keep putting your answers i'll go to the next slide so basically it it came because of this reason you can see what are these these are materials made out of you know wildlife from the greenery so people are saying it made life simple and easy exactly not exactly because of this reason but a very good try very good try so i'll just say that in the mid 80s okay people were making various things from the trees from the different parts of animals bodies as you can see few in the pictures like a grand piano you all might have seen the keys are made from were made from ivory okay ivory is nothing but the trunk of elephants right you can see so many ivory products in this screen also you might have seen pictures of uh, animal skin being used on the chairs right so people at that time understood that if they continued using so many you know products of wildlife of the greenery then very soon they would lose the green cover and uh, and many animals would go extinct so what can be done so that they could have lots of products but not but not by destroying the environment so there came the question that can there be something artificial from which materials can be made and the answer to that was plastic so plastic basically came as an environmental solution to protect the environment plastic was invented for the first time and you know this is the person who invented the first one john wesley here uh, and it was made from a substance called celluloid which was made from plants okay this is the beginning of the plastic it's written in the image the first plastic but the problem came towards the 20th century so plastic came as a solution to a problem but gradually it itself started becoming a problem in the 20th century when during the industrial revolution people realized that so many things can be made out of this substance called plastic it came to be known as a wonder material wonder material and it was flexible it would not break if it falls from a height it had so many advantages right and you know the world wars were happening so people had to transport large amount of things from one place to other so you need lightweight materials which again plastic has this has that capability right so and people realize the magic formula that plastic could be made from uh, petroleum which is nothing but fossil fuels now again my third question to you all that fossil fuels as we know is one of the biggest reason for climate change today uh, people blame the main thing on the fossil fuel industry right 
So how many of you really knew that plastic, any kind of plastic that we use, be it my earphone or anything that you can imagine, it's all made from petroleum. It's a petroleum product. It's made from fossil fuels. So how many of you really knew that uh, this fact that, you know, plastic is made from a substance which is the biggest contributor to climate change today? Just a yes or no, maybe a Y for yes and N for no. The, okay, most of you guys knew. Oh, okay, fine. For me, when I first learned it, it was really very surprising because I had been talking against fossil fuel industry for a long time, but I was using plastic in different places and it came to me as a very shocking thing that uh, it was ironical to say on both sides, right? So the next thing goes, as this is a very important picture we should concentrate on in the mid 20th century, in the 1950s, in the, in the Western part of the world, uh, you know, people realized that, especially the women at home, they had to do a lot of work. And one of them was, you know, washing the dishes, especially like after having meals. So this was, uh, you know, a lot of hard work. And then people realized that if plastic, from plastic, we could make disposable items. Disposable means single use. Because of which they would not have to wash it, then life would become much more easier. Or we can say convenient. So you can see a family throwing plastic cutlery, like plates and glasses and spoons, everything in the air, as a celebration of throw away living. So this came as a big solution to the humans, uh, you know, for a convenient lifestyle. And this was the beginning of the use of plastic as a disposable item or a single use item. But as we know, this uh, quote goes, too much of anything is good for nothing. Now, I'll just, you know, uh, fast forward the historical part from 1950s to the 21st century present times. What is a... What is the condition of that convenient lifestyle that we have taken up? This is a beach in Bali, Indonesia. So people have this dream of going to a beach in Bali and sit under the sunshine. Uh, unfortunately, your dreams might crash when you reach the beach because you might get in this condition and you might not get a space to sit even, right? And still, we are humans, so we managed to find some places to click some pictures, as you can see, even in these circumstances. So this is in Indonesia, and this is a developing country. This is China. This is Xiang River. It's the world's most plastic polluted river. So many of us have this imagination that plastic may be a problem only of the developing or the underdeveloped nations, but that's not true. It's a developed nation and they are having uh, their own deal of problems with plastic. And China is a country is facing a lot of plastic pollution. In the last almost in the last decade uh, again coming to question which place do you think this is this is in india if you could, if you guys just try it you know um i am asking out of you know you will just you might not know exactly but try yeah very good mumbai delhi any more just try No punishments for wrong answers, no chocolates for correct answers. Dhara, Tam, Delhi. Okay. Fine. Good to see people are trying, really. Karnataka, Kerala, Assam. Yeah, it's just, in one way, I'll say that no answer is wrong because this is a symbol of the entire country, the situation. But uh, specifically, if I say this place, this is Delhi. On the right side, you see a hill of garbage. Um, this is um, this like this. There are four such in Delhi. Okay, and uh, this picture is around of the year 2017 or 18. You can see the situation of the water too. The black water, as you can see, this is very much connected to the hill by side on the right side. And so the height of these hills right now as i'm speaking the last year the report came out is equivalent almost equivalent to the height of kutub minar okay as i'm speaking to you maybe it has already crossed the height of kutub minar i don't know the current update but 
try to understand how much waste is being created especially by the developed cities where there is a lot of education there is iit there is uh, what not there is hotel management institutes and um, all the management institutes all the good education aims medical facilities especially those cities are producing the highest amount of garbage in our country coming to next slide again which place is this what do you guess this place does it seem similar like familiar to anyone okay okay china so this is china assam okay okay assam any more trials bogi bill assam assam so this is dipor bill okay this is dipor bill many of you might have you know been to dipor bill uh, so uh, i think most of you as you are speaking are here from guwahati i guess uh, if i believe in that way that you guys are from guwahati then i have a question that every morning you guys must be you know giving your waste to the waste collectors right um, they charge i think 30 rupees per month to collect your waste so uh, and our homes are clean because you know uh, we give our waste to these waste collectors so so i my question to you is where okay cia says uh, so some people are not from guwahati doesn't matter i think uh, from all parts of our country waste is collected by the municipality itself so how many of us uh, from guwahati do you guys know where this waste goes from your home don't tell to the big dustbins i am saying the final destination from a home where does it finally land up i am saying only about guwahati because about other place dumping ground to the garbage factory okay any any more answers okay Uh, am i audible clearly like there was a message that my connection is not stable am i audible am i clear my audio okay fine fine thank you so the waste from our home garbage factory okay so the waste from our home is not going to any factory yes as vaibhav said it is going to the dumping ground the question was where is our dumping ground but i'll say it's it's in depot bill the picture that i'm showing right now this is the place where the waste from any school any home or any place other than hospitals other than medical waste everything is coming up to this place it's depot bill now depot bill is a preserved is a conserved site okay for the migratory migratory birds that comes you know so it was in 2003 it got recognized as a ramsar site so there are very few such sites in the entire country and depot bill is one of them and this is what the situation is today so the migratory bird which comes in the winters which we expect to see in the greeneries the clear waters they mostly like to come to this place because they get a lot of food they get a lot of colorful things which they mistake as food and uh, you know we'll come to what happens because of this after uh, after few slides so because a lot of waste from guwahati if i say from guwahati's perspective the waste that we throw away goes to two places either it is going to the landfill site in depot bill or finally like what we are throwing into the drains and all everything is finally going into brahmaputra without any filtration because our drains are finally going to bhorulu bhorulu river which is already dead river is finally linked to brahmaputra and there is no filtration anywhere okay the entire thing any packet that i'm throwing in the drain finally reaches brahmaputra because during the floods you know the water takes with along with the water current all the waste is finally going to the river and if you have observed the brahmaputra river the water is never stagnant of all the water bodies no water bodies are stagnant it's moving it's in constant motion 
and with the water flow all these packets of plastic and all the waste they are all flowing and because of the water flow the current of water we see that in the entire planet there are five hot spots where these wastes are getting collected you can see three of them in this image these uh, these are known as the garbage patches of the world western garbage patch eastern garbage patch there is a subtropical one there are actually as a whole there are five such and what happens because of that this is the scenario so these are the dead bodies of fish and if you open up their stomach this is what you will find small small bits of plastic uh, also we call them as micro plastic um this is not ex exactly a blue whale but this was used uh, to shoot uh, for a movie in indonesia and this was all the trash that you see this was collected from the river bank and from that they made this you know big uh, blue whale and all the trash they put inside to make the people aware of the plastic pollution uh this is a very special image um i'll first tell you about the bottom right image you see uh a bird feeding another bird right so these birds are known as albatross birds you might have heard this name maybe in your textbooks albatross so the albatross birds are quite rare uh, this is an image of an island called the midway islands and there are no human presence in this island but uh, albatross birds what they do is that they fly for 7 to 8 months or even a complete year in search of food over the oceans right and what they what they find is the things that are floating on the top surface of those water bodies and you know plastic floats too and they consume that food because they have to feed their children who are waiting for them for 7 months to almost a year back in the beach the parents go back with the food stored in their throat and here they are feeding their children with poison the poison that you or me might have littered so casually thinking that it's just a piece of plastic doesn't even matter right but here you see this the upper picture the top left you can see the dead body of an albatross child and when the stomach was cut open this is what were found inside so understand the 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 kind of problem we are facing it's an island where there is no human presence but the materials that we are using without using any visa and passport they are reaching foreign countries and they are destroying lives over there and to give you an estimation of what it feels to have this plastic within i'll tell you on the left side of the image you see an albatross bird and uh, in the stomach you see it's filled with plastic trash if all that plastic was if uh, not if the entire plastic in the stomach was taken out and on the right side you can see they were kept separately and they were weighed measured okay and i'll tell you what it's found so the average weight of humans okay it's around 50 to 60 kilos right the average weight of humans of of an adult human so this bird the weight of this plastic compared to the weight of this bird was found to be one third in a mathematics the fraction that comes out is one third now imagine for humans if my weight is 60 kilograms and if one third of my body by weight is nothing but plastic it means one third of 60 is nothing but 20 20 kilos of my body will be filled with trash plastic okay imagine how would that feel because plastic can't be digested also plastic will just be in my stomach my stomach will swell up you know and i'll have to carry this weight every day and finally die out of exhaustion this is what our marine species our birds are facing because of plastic littering and you can see the condition of marine life these fishing nets people were fishing um, you can see in chennai kolkata mumbai this fishing nets and everything has come out of nylon which is again a form of plastic right the fishing nets tear apart and no one bothers to take it up okay finally they go on the bed of the rivers bodies and you know and the condition you can see what is the consequence of that and you can see the cups of plastic the bottles that people throw away after rituals and all in brahmaputra you see after certain puja and certain festivals people are throwing away everything into the river body uh, they say that they worship but this is what we are doing to our river bodies water bodies very famous video it 
came up came on youtube a 8 minute video on the left side if you can see the image of a turtle a, a conservationist found in a beach a turtle was unable to breathe properly and they found that there was something in the turtle the tur the turtle's nose okay and when they tried to pull it out they found it was nothing but a plastic straw and then there came a very famous quote that you know that when we are using a plastic straw for a juice we do it so easily and casually and we think that how am i even contributing it's just one straw right not a big deal but then the, the quote came out as 7.7 .7 billion the entire population of the world 7.7 .7 billion pe people said it's just one straw which means we are using 7.7 .7 billion straws just in a moment casually in the middle section you see a tortoise a goat uh, you know consuming plastic on the other side you see a cow of course goats and cows are not very interested to you know eat plastic but the way we throw our garbage on the roads that we trash everything inside poly bags and then put it right on the roadside or in the dustbins and they need the food these animals need the food and finally they you know chew this plastic so that they can get the food so in Guwahati, as per record, uh, uh, in the last year, a surgery was done on a cow near our dump site because uh, her stomach was this big and uh, she was ill. It was found that 30 kilos of polythene came out of her stomach, 30, 30, 30, 30 kilos of that. And finally, she died after the surgery. She could not take that in. So this is the situation of most places, I will say, of our country. But what happens to us? the last part of this section that we are doing so much does anything happen to us for that so and this is a very interesting part that the 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 plastic trash that ends up in the water bodies what happens the small fish the mistake they mistake this small piece of plastic for food so they end up eating them they die the small fishes are eaten by the large fishes okay which are finally consumed by us you know, I have seen many places in Bhorolu where fishing is done and the fishes are sold as local fish. People want to have local fish, right? We don't even see properly where the fishes are actually coming from. But I don't want to make you, uh, you know, stop eating fish. That's not my point. The point is that people at times feel that, you know, people who are non-vegetarian, there is a concept that maybe they are consuming too much of plastic because finally the plastic enters the bodies because we are eating some beings who might have consumed plastic, right? But I'll come to another point that, you know, people who are vegetarian, uh, they are really not in a very good position because they consume milk, right? And milk is coming from cows. In Guwahati, in Boragao, the dump site, there are 400 cows who are left open every day. Anyone who visits will be able to see that. They, they eat the trash that we are throwing over there. And from those cows, you know, those cows are also milked and the milk is also, uh, you know, sold in our city. Okay. So I am very much sure that that milk definitely contains microplastic, right? And people who are vegan, who are not eating non-veg or, or they are not even consuming milk, there is something special that we all take and that is salt, right? Salt comes from seawater and that water is already contaminated with plastic. And as per the research uh, in the last two years being done, last three years, I should say, that there is not a single manufacturing unit of salt in the entire Asia which doesn't contain microplastic. Not a single manufacturing unit in the entire Asia. So let us be completely sure that you know that the plastic we are throwing out is finally coming on our on our table as food and our stomach contains such microplastic we can never feel while eating because these are micro micro means 10 to the power minus 6 very very small of the size of our hair of the diameter of our hair so even when you are eating we can never feel that that we are uh, consuming plastic so coming to this end of the first section, I have a small quiz for you all. And I want you all to use the chat box uh, to reply to this. That if you're moving out with your friends in the evening and having some tea or coffee or fruit juice, which kind of glass shall you use? Like a plastic cup, paper cup, or any other maybe idea that you have, which I'm not having. So I've put up only three options here. 
So please, uh, uh, I would like to see your reply in the chat box. So paper cup, Pratham is C. If you could rewrite what is your option, I mean C means any other option means what is your option? Okay, that was is clay, great. I should have given one option, I forgot about that. Clay, paper cup. Okay, others? Let's interact, then we'll understand many points, right? Paper cup. Mud or clay cup, okay. Whoever is choosing any other option, please uh, write your option, okay. I'll wait for 10 more answers, like right? steel glass, okay. Any other like glass? Three more, if I can see. After Lahak Khetan, if I can have just three more replies. Because I'll tell you, there is no right and wrong answer over here. It's not a textbook question or question of Google that I'm asking. Many, many, there can be many answers. That's why I've kept the option C open. Steel cup, paper cup. Okay. Fine. 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 Thank you. The next question is a very simple question. Why? Now, if you could, those who have answered and those who have not answered, you can still answer. Why have you chosen what you have chosen? I hope it's not getting boring for you guys. I'm reusable okay bala minakshi says it's reusable any paper cup clay cup that i got this is where plastic gets offended here plastic ko kisi ne choose nahi kya like you know i chose glass cup because it is reusable because they are biodegradable uh, Weber says biodegradable, um, hence can be thrown or broken. Uh, Weber, you chose uh, which one? Maybe a paper cup or a clay? What did you write? I just forgot. Pratham says the paper cups and plastic cups are always disposed, means thrown away after using, but steel cups can be reused. So some people are saying they, it's best to choose something reusable options. We should not throw away things. And in the throw away part, there are two throw aways be being chosen. One was clay I saw and one is paper. Okay, so about these two, I'll just say, means one, one line that paper cup is not biodegradable. Um, we think paper cup is made from paper. There is paper, but unfortunately there is a layering of plastic inside. Okay, so um, it is not at all eco-friendly. What happens is that this paper cup actually cannot be recycled it doesn't get um, composted because you know if you throw it in, into your compost then the plastic the part inside will also get mixed with the compost which becomes dangerous afterwards so finally they are thrown in the landfill or the dump side so at times i had discussions with my team that you know shockingly a plastic cup can be actually better than a paper cup because the plastic cups that we throw away are actually recyclable it's a type 5 plastic called as a PP plastic. It's actually a recyclable plastic. Generally, we don't recycle. We throw them in the dustbin. That's a different problem. But it is recyclable. But the paper cups are non-recyclable. But I will not try to draw comparisons between them. The clay cups that we use, uh, it's mainly thought of as biodegradable. But even that is non-biodegradable. Because, uh, you know, the earthen materials that are made, after that, they are burnt. So there's a chemical reaction happening when it's burnt. And finally, the thing on which we are uh, eating or drinking, they, they can be broken down into small pieces. 
but they will never mix with the soil they are non biodegradable but yes unlike plastic they will not cause harm like they are they are not they are not mixed with certain chemicals so they will not cause harm to the soil but they will just lay like that they'll keep you know keep getting stored they'll never mix with the soil and um, yeah most people have chosen reusable cups different forms of reusable cup uh, yeah steel cups glasses made of steel yeah so matka matka jo hota hai matke mein uh, as in guwahati i have known they are totally non biodegradable matkas are not biodegradable because they are burnt uh, before being uh, served our tea or coffee or whatever because of that burning process they become non biodegradable whatever this is was a small discussion i hope we could learn something so suman ma'am this was the first part and if you like to say yes uh, shikhar thank you so much that was uh, thought provoking to say the least i mean the impact that we are having on the environment is heartbreaking you know what we are doing to other fellow organisms it's it's um, well anyway uh we have with us two of our students from grade 9 ashmit chakrabarti and lovelyn das they are both active members of the iyp program as well as the interact club ashmit could you share with us about any initiative that you have taken towards sustainability and especially reducing plastic usage in your daily life thank you ma'am first of all good afternoon everyone and yes uh, it's true that i have been active with the iyp and interact club and yes i have been taking up measures to reduce plastic from my life we all know that uh, thermocol is non biodegradable so as we see in social gatherings in our city in uh, other big parties or in hotels they don't serve uh like very less hotels they serve their food in uh, metal plates or any other plate they max uh, maximum of them they serve the food in thermocol plates so that thermocol plate could be like replaced by something which is biodegradable and that is banana leaf banana leaf yes it sounds a bit odd but yes it is biodegradable it will decompose easily there is no like harm in bio in banana leaf as we saw the condition of those animals that but we won't be able to see it again if we use if we like at least uh, switch banana uh, switch uh, thermocol plates with banana leaf second of all i carry my water bottle everywhere i go i don't go outside somewhere and don't i don't go outside and buy the bisleri bottle or any other company bailey bottle or that bailey bottle i take my water bottle i fill it up from rest restaurants restaurants and other water coolers but yes uh, i like try to like avoid those plastic bottles third of all uh, like the not third of all sorry the last point which i have is there was a time not now there was a time before 20 30 years where we saw that people went to the markets with their jute bags or the cloth bags and brought their things the vegetables they could easily put inside the bag and if they bought chicken or fish they could they would have wrapped wrapped it inside newspaper and brought it but now what happens for even a 10 rupee thing we take we take like we go empty handed and come back come back with the plastic bag that is really sad but if some people they like take their jute bags so i have seen this in my uh, lo locality they take the jute bags and inside that i thought that okay they will use like they are using the old system but no inside that again they are bringing the vegetables in plastic bag only so there is like no use in taking if taking that that's what that's what uh, i had to say of my experience and i am really happy for this webinar because i wanted people i wanted that more and more people should know about the outcomes we are like the outcomes of our work we had which we had done before when making plastic yes it may be convenient but it is not good for the uh, it is not good for our nature thank you thank you ashmit and now here is a question for the audience 
what are the zero waste practices that you have adopted or contemplating on adopting in your life? You can add your answers in the comment box. Any step that you have taken, like how Ashmita shared with us, and in fact, Ashmita had even shared a video where he had uh, had his lunch on banana leaf. So I know that whatever he has said, he's actually practicing a very small things, but then they don't make a difference. You know, once you stop taking a plastic bottle with you and you're carrying your own bottle, like most of us, we do. And I remember a time uh, a few years back when we found carrying a polythene bag was quite convenient. But you know, the growing consciousness that has grown in amongst all of us, I find that uh, this has reduced to, it's become almost negligible. And I think uh, there are other things that all of you must be doing in your own life too. So maybe you could share a little with us. Let me tell you something that we did in our school. We used to have disposable cutlery before, but then we have replaced them with metal ones. So, you know, the metal cutlery, the spoon, the fork, you don't need to throw that, you use them, we just wash and use them again and again. And in the long run, if you think about even one month's span of time, the amount of plastic usage that we have decreased, that is quite a bit. And you know, if we practice this kind of practices in our day-to-day -day life, everyone, I think that will make a substantial impact, a difference for the better. So I, I guess uh, maybe Shekhar, you could tell us a little about the various ways that these children can adopt some eco-friendly measures. Yeah. Definitely, ma'am. I guess Pratham, uh, Pratham Sharma, he shared a very good um, point by reusing recyclable bags and objects like jute bags or steel cups and by refusing plastic in shops. So very good points. Uh, thank you, Pratham, for sharing these points. Shabnam says conserve energy. Good for the environment, definitely conserving energy. But here, uh, what exactly we are talking is that we have already seen the problem caused by plastic pollution. But can individuals do something about it? Because when these discussions come up, you know, that we think the problem is too big to handle. It's too huge. And what can I do? And what can individual do? And when we talk about, talk with people, people say that, Akele karne se kya hi banega? They have this common answer that, Me karne se kya hi hoga? So on this point, I will try to answer or show you a few things from my own personal life and from examples of my friends that Akele karne se we can give some examples of that. So before coming to the examples, I'll just say that this is a, a modern day waste management hierarchy. We know waste. When I say waste, let's not think just of plastic. Waste is of so many types, right? But in that, the three things which you have uh, always read in our books is reuse, reduce, reuse, recycle. We have read in our books. But now there are two more uh, to that one is recover the fourth and fifth is disposal right and what do we generally do in our in our daily lives the fifth part um, first four is like goes for a toss completely the thing that we do mainly is dispose so we basically dispose it right we are not following the first four but today I'm not going to talk about the first four I'll just only talk about the first and the third reduce and recycle so in our country presently the amount of waste that is being created no waste management company or waste management can ever solve this problem because the waste is too huge to even manage first of all so the first thing is can we reduce the amount of waste we are creating that is the first step to think about 
इसलिए दिस इज ओनली रीजन इन अर बुक्स दैट वी स्टडी रिड्यूस रीयूज रिसाइकल रिसाइकल इज अ फाइनल पार्ट वी डोंट स्टार्ट विथ रिसाइकल वी एंड विथ रिसाइकल राइट द फर्स्ट स्टेप इज ऑलवेज टॉक्स अबाउट रिड्यूसिंग आर वेस्ट सो हियर आई विल नॉट गो मच इन टू दिस and what are the nine tips i'll not give you tips but i'll show you how our friends have been able to do that in their lives so this is uh, like uh, something that my friend uh, nilakshi one of our team members she carries always in her bag uh, if i start with you can see uh, there is a reusable water bottle so she is an architect so she always has to be outside in the lunch time so she carries her own tiffin because you know healthy habits secondly no trash we are producing third you can see there there is a tumbler the glass uh, there is a saucer because we are very fond of pani puri not in covid 19 situation but otherwise so pani puri maybe it, it it comes either in paper or plastic but doesn't matter the problem is not just plastic the problem is waste as a whole so why to even you waste a paper right so we can take our own few of this cutleries then comes a spoon the fork bar mein jab hum chowmin kha rahe but roll and whatever we we get this spoons plastic spoon plastic for completely unnecessary we pay for the food and not for the spoon or fork right we need the food and not those things then comes the straw the plastic straw that we use and throw away at times we really need this straw so why don't we use something reusable that is like the the bamboo straw i've shown here the steel metal straws these are all reusable we can use it many times then comes you can see a handkerchief which people have been using for a long time even i have been i have used so much in my school life but i don't know why i still use but people have become so much dependent on this tissue papers when we go to restaurant uh, suddenly we end up you know hath mein thoda sa kuch lag gaya and we'll wipe it using a tissue paper because it's free right and the problem with tissue paper is that uh, if if you consider a family of four ek saal mein in the entire year the amount of tissue papers that a general family uses it's equivalent to cutting down four fresh trees so it's not just plastic that is a problem it's any kind of thing that we are using without respecting the source from which it is made even steel i am showing you steel but steel is mined trees are cut down lands are cleared and then steel is mined from there we are getting these things so nothing is completely eco friendly we have to respect all the sources from which anything is being made only then we'll be doing proper justice we can see a cloth bag over here uh, she uses ink pen because a ball point pen or a dot pen that we say it has a refill inside and this is nothing but a single use stuff a plastic because uh, when i was in school i used to change my refill which is again a single use straw plastic straw kind of stuff and uh, now these people directly throw away the pen itself because it's so cheap 10 rupees so you can just buy another one why to change the refill so a uh, ink pen uh, you know is kind of comparatively eco friendly compared to a dot pen because we reuse you see a bamboo toothbrush uh, you see we see a loofah kind of to use as a body scrub rather than you know the plastic things that are coming out um and you see a body and a hair you know soap she made as an experiment so these are lot of things that i'm showing uh, i don't i i know an average person might not do so many changes but this is i'm sure might be inspiring some of you to make some individual changes in your life uh these are my friends one is abhinav he is enjoying the coconut juice without a straw uh this is me on the second image where i i i bought paneer you know without using any plastic because paneer has a water content so my when i go for marketing you know i plan in my head that what i do i need to buy so if there is anything that has to come in plastic i try to carry uh, my vessels you know my utensils in which i can carry them uh, you can see some of the plastics that comes to my house they are washed and clean just like the clothes by the side you know and again these are my friends enjoying soft drinks in glass bottles because uh, they are avoiding the plastic bottles and these glass bottles are reused they are sanitized in industries you can see some clay materials as i said these are non biodegradable these were actually thrown after rituals into the brahmaputra river bank so we clean the river bank we clean this uh, we sanitized we cleaned and sanitized all this stuff and then we went to some orphanage and all where we enjoyed 
the festival of holi by coloring these pots and we sold this for fundraising and i'll also just tell you the amount we all got this for free of cost right ye hame sab kuch free mein river bank se mila we we uh, we raised 13000 in one day 13 13000 rupees by selling this after coloring them and with this was used for the children of orphanage to buy different things for them uh these are my friends you know sitting in the river bank and enjoying their uh, sugarcane juice or things all in their reusable cups um this is uh, on the left it's my friend shivani she loves chat she loves chat and see she is carrying her own bati <laughs> so uh, in a shop on the right it's kavita uh, my friend she is having a pastry in her own uh, in her own saucer in in repose again my friends we were going to mumbai we carried our own cutlery uh, you know our, our own food stuffed in the cutleries then we were enjoying tea on train so you know you see that life is enjoyable but we don't create trash that is the concept of zero waste that we are coming up with this is my dad uh, just two days back it was the uh, second anniversary of my cloth bags it has been two years that have i have started using my cloth bags permanently on the right side you can see uh, this is me buying gro groceries so like the dal sugar uh, the pulses and all what what happens when we try to get it in paper at times uh, the paper might tear off right because of the weight of them so again i carry the utensils from my home something that's reusable so that i don't have to use any kind of plastic or paper or anything uh this is again my parents enjoying tea in uh, at the airport so many people were staring at us you know that why are we drinking from this stainless steel glasses but this helped us you know start a conversation with the people at the airport itself and they they understood that yeah it's better not to use those paper glasses that we are given because they have the plastic liners inside and which is a non recyclable trash we want to enjoy the tea we don't want to do bad to the environment at any cost right so uh, so and i'll just come to say this point that this is what basically happens uh, i am talking to you about the solutions right as a solution the first step as i have said is about reducing the amount of waste we can create and the second thing is what we can do is try to know what we are throwing in the dustbin dustbin mein hum sab kuch fekte khane matlab kele ka chilka ho fruits so then the dead batteries or sanitary pads and what not the plastic pieces the the syringes everything goes into the dustbin It, and most of the days uh, the the rectifiers sorry the municipal workers come and we are giving it to them and one day or two day if they don't come this is what we do on the right side we take the you know, we take the bucket and throw it by the road side and it's such a common scene in our city right uh, so to understand what we are throwing in the dustbin this is uh, this is a data of our entire country a general data that when we were talking about plastic for such a long time here you come to understand that plastic is really not a big problem actually so the 60% of what we throw in a dustbin is actually organic waste it's kitchen waste so if we want to solve half of the problem we just need to manage our organic waste and half of the problem is already over 60% is organic waste which means uh, kitchen mein jo bhi kachra ho raha hai even khane ke baad the food waste okay we should not waste food of course by chance if you are wasting a little bit food for something or the other some leftovers everything is compostable everything finally mixes up with the soil that is organic waste 20% is recyclable waste like the plastic the metals and so many other the paper these are all recyclable so 60 plus 20 80% we can actually manage baki 20% mein 10% ho gaya toxic aapka batteries ho gaya then thermometers and all carrying mercury these are very toxic the light bulbs the cd play the cds this is a toxic waste and the 10% finally is reject waste jaise cigarette butts ho gaya sanitary pads ho gaya and there are many other like the bandages that we use these are all reject waste so actually landfill the dump site concept came into existence because of this 10% of waste reject waste isko hame landfill mein fekna hai that's why the landfill concept came 
बट वट वी डिड वॉज दैट हमने डस्टबिन में सब कुछ फेंका एक साथ सब दे दिया सब लैंडफिल में चला गया सो लैंडफिल इज नॉट बैड लैंडफिल इज नॉट रॉन्ग द रॉन्ग इज आवर वे ऑफ यूजिंग अ लैंडफिल दैट वी आर थ्रोइंग एवरीथिंग इन द डस्टबिन एंड एवरीथिंग इज गोइंग टू द लैंडफिल सो finally actually we can with compostable waste with the kitchen waste we call it as a black gold and with the dry waste these days in city you get you see two dustbins na green and blue dry and wet most of people don't even understand what is wet and dry waste like chai pee liya aadha chai reh gaya gila hai to wo mind mein aata hai ki kya ye wet waste hai because chai hai usme right it's it's wet right so we think like putting the glass in the dustbin of wet waste but wet waste only means kitchen waste only kitchen waste food waste that is wet waste and dry waste mein baki sab everything paper glass metal strips and everything goes into the dry waste and dry waste mein there are certain divisions called as recyclables and non recyclables kuch kuch is recycle hote hain kuch kuch is recycle nahi hote that's all because as uh, suman ma'am started this today's talk saying that प्रॉब्लम को सॉल्व करना है तो पहले प्रॉब्लम को समझना जरूरी है वी नीड टू इफ यू हैव टू सॉल्व द वेस्ट क्राइसिस वी नीड टू नो व्हाट आर द डिफरेंट काइंड्स ऑफ वेस्ट एंड दैट इज द रीजन आई हैव टोल्ड यू सो मच अबाउट इट दिस इज अ फोटो ऑफ माय होम इन माय होम्स यू कैन सी आई आई सेपरेट माय किचन वेस्ट फ्रॉम माय ड्राई वेस्ट एंड दिस इज अ सिंपलेस्ट थिंग दैट वी कैन डू एट होम ओके and um, this is what we also do with our compost you can see this is at my friend's place she uses a matka we can say um, um, from uh, and this is what we get a uh, good compost which we can sell uh, to the farmers to the nurseries or agar hamare ghar mein garden hai to we can use it in our own garden and by doing this we can actually change the lives of these people these are the rag pickers that we see in our daily life hum jo injections blade and everything that we throw mindlessly into the dustbin jo ye sab dump yards mein jate hain these people who walk over those without any footwear imagine barefoot you are walking over syringes over blades over toxic chemicals just to find recyclable items so that they can survive you don't see any gloves in their hands right imagine yourself cleaning waste of your home we ourselves wear gloves at our own home while you know clean cleaning our dustbins but these people cleaning trash of the entire city they don't have anything in their hands right and we are somehow definitely responsible for this situation if we transform from this mixed waste to, to segregated waste if we keep our waste separately we can transform their future into this where these rag pickers will have a proper costume proper dignified job they will have the id cards they will come to our home to collect waste separately clean not from our drains from our water bodies because kachra to udhar jana hi nahi hai na kachra ghar mein alag se rakhna hai and then these people can come and collect and work in a very dignified way so this is my second section it ends here and uh, the question is that to all of you is that if we can really make some lifestyle shift man lete imagine karte we stop using plastic straws and poly bags and all how many pieces of plastic can we actually stop from going to the landfill and i forgot to use a, a word this is one year ka measurement ek saal mein how many pieces of plastic can we stop from going to the landfill if we make changes in our individual lifestyle and this is an average answer this answer will differ from person to person definitely but this is what we have calculated while we changed our team did work on their own lifestyle we made this calculation so please go for a try it's 10000 20000 okay few more answers by the meantime as you guys please uh, you know just try for some answers i'll just say that the examples which ashmit gave while before i started was really very interesting um, i look forward to using banana leaves i'm trying to tell to the community organizing durga puja to use banana leaves i just had a meeting with them yesterday so and then this might happen this year many pandal pand, pandals might be using banana leaves and all that concept so very inspiring example ashmit thank you sir 
so 1000 10000 20000 10000 yeah i get this uh, thank you uh, the answer uh, correct answer and average is actually around it's 20000 pieces of plastic that we can actually stop from going to the dump site if we bring changes in our life so imagine wherever you are sitting right now just look into your own room and imagine 20000 pieces of plastic in that room and imagine the trash you are saving here i think how many uh, like uh, we have around 35 participants imagine how many kilos of waste will not be going to the landfill because of just 35 of us right now choosing not to use those materials and be a little conscious about what we are using so uh, yeah suman ma'am this is this is what i was trying to tell <laughs> about okay, it's yeah. it's really interesting uh shekhar could you tell us about the experiment the power of 300 we have been hearing about it and we are really curious to know what it is all about and how do we become a part of it okay ma'am thank you thank you so much uh, i'll tell a little bit about this experiment that we are doing power of 300 and we have named it as a tagline is recycle to support a life so uh, if we have observed the rack pickers, you know, in our daily life, uh, we might see that there are certain things they will never pick up, like polythene bags, they will never pick up. The oil packets, the milk and oil pouches, the plastic pouches that we use, they'll never pick up. Why? Because they are very lightweight. Now, you know, um, if you know how this business works, I'll go with a little of mathematics that if something is very light in weight, they will never pick up those items. Why is that? Because unko kilo wise may sell karna hota hai. They have to sell in per kilo, right? If something is lightweight, you need a lot of them to make that one kilo. So we know by our data, polythene bag, oil pouches and all, hume at least 300 chahi to make it one kilo. Now imagine yourself as a rack picker. Will you start searching for 300 packets to make one kilo? Never, right? You will never do that. So why to do that? Leave it the way because their job is not about cleanliness. Their job is a business. They need those things which will weigh a lot and will be easy to sell because they have a family, you know, to earn that for. So these things lay on the roads, lie on the roads. And in the morning, the municipal workers will come, they'll clean, they'll mix it up and will throw it into the depot bill as an entire thing. And strangely, these are all recyclable items. The polythene bags, oil packets, milk packets are all recyclable, but they never get collected. Now, what the second problem is that can we individuals do something? If we are using plastic, at most we might be using five soft plastic. Just if we marketing, we will use two things of plastic, like polythene bags. Or ghar mein milk, oil, everyone uses, right? So agar packets mein aare, ek milk ka packet mein agar le liya, to somehow the data shows around five soft plastic being used in a day, right? So five soft plastics agar in a day hota hai, then I'll uh, just give me a moment. So it's it shows that in two months, two months mein kitna hoga five in a day. So two months means 60 days. And five into 60, simple mathematics is 300. 60 days, matlab, do mahine mein, we get 300 pieces of soft plastic. 300 pieces, matlab, ek kilo. Or ye ek kilo ka cost kitna das rupe. So tell any family, do mahine plastic alak se rakke das rupe ke liye koi nahi karne wala. You know, no one is going to try to do something with segregation for 10 rupees for two months. It's, it's, uh, it's not practical. And the third part is that this oil and uh, milk packets they contain fats inside okay because of these fats these packets cannot be recycled so you have to get rid of these fats so these are three big problems for recycling of these lightweight plastics and we try to solve this problem so of course mathematics helps uh, so we thought that agar 300 plastics make it one kilogram then we our target is not one person like me who will collect my soft plastics, but can we have 300 people to store their soft plastics separately? If 300 people does, then what will happen? I'll show you now. So per day, agar 300 log kar rahe, then ek din mein there are five plastics, soft plastics. 
तो अगर 300 लोग कर रहे हैं तो कितना होगा 300 इंटू फाइव दैट इज 1500 हंड्रेड पैकेट विच इज नथिंग बट फाइव किलोग्राम सो इन वन डे इट्स फाइव किलोग्राम इमेजिन बाई सम प्रोसेस आई नॉट टेल यू हाउ राइट नाउ इमेजिन बाई सम प्रोसेस यू गेट रिड ऑफ द फैट्स ऑल्सो सो ये जो दस रुपए में वी वेर सेलिंग द प्राइस गोज अप टू थर्टी रुपीज बिकॉज नाउ दे आर क्लीन दे आर रिड ऑफ फैट्स ओके हाउ मच कैन वी जेनरेट मनी फ्रॉम दिस in one day it's 110 rupees 110 rupees in one day if 300 people works together in one day in a month it's 3300 rupees and then we thought that we have written here two big schools but here i i want to imagine more of five six schools agar practically socho i imagine if around 2000 students i'm saying about students if they register for this uh, campaign then what can happen from 2000 students कितना काम करना है बस अपने सॉफ्ट प्लास्टिक को अलग रखना है ऑयल पैकेट मिल्क पैकेट एंड पॉलिथिन बैग्स वी कैन जनरेट अराउंड ट्वेंटी टू थाउजेंड रुपीज फ्रॉम दैट जस्ट इन अ सिंगल मंथ एंड बीइंग इन्वॉल्व इन सोशल वर्क आई फील दैट वी हैव डन दिस काइंड ऑफ वर्क बट नॉट विथ थ्री हंड्रेड और टू थाउजेंड पीपल बट वट एवर मनी वी हैव वी हैव बीन एबल टू सेव लाइफ ऑफ स्ट्रीट एनिमल्स बाई प्रोवाइडिंग मनी फॉर देयर सर्जरीज एंड ऑपरेशन this money can go for you know funding the education of a child who has merit but may not be able to go to a good school or college so this money that we are generating we are not asking from people that donate us money right we are asking for your empty packets and what we do as a team we do a door step collection hum ghar ghar mein ja ke collect karte ye waste okay and moreover if students do it there is a great advantage because if students belong to a certain institute do the students like now it's a lockdown time or at least the schools are closed not a lockdown so when the schools open like manlo after one month or one and a half months whatever waste you might have stored you can bring to your school and we can directly collect it from one point a one point collection you know it will save the fuel of our car and it will help us collect a lot of waste from a single place we can measure it right in front of your eyes and we can tell how much contribution you are doing for a good cause now power of 300 experiment that we are doing with all the money that we are generating with this money what are we going to do is that we are going to feed the families of the waste collectors because during covid 19 you know these poor people were having the you know worst time of their life in the economic conditions they lost their jobs they lost their salary but we chose not to help them with money or we chose not to ask money from anyone we chose to ask for empty packets from people recycle them raise money from recycling with that money we will buy ration and with that ration will be distributed to the families of waste pickers that will be enough for one complete month not for a lunch or dinner one complete month okay and uh, the entire process i shall just explain kaise karna hota hai when we go to a shop we will buy a milk pouch like this i hope we do not buy a polythin bag to carry this home we don't need that when we try to open this packet try not to cut from a uh, side as a triangle part which comes out do not do that try to cut it parallelly as shown in the picture you know cut it open like that third process of course just put it into the vessel fourth part is cut it open it will form a rectangular sheet right just cut it open the entire plastic this contains fats you know because of the milk what we we'll do in step 5 is we use small amount of little amount of soap and water remember water is a resource we should not use a lot of water little water just wash it off and keep it dry as on step 6 and in step 7 we can compress and store it and you know i'll just show you there is a lot of lot of stuff that i have stored uh, you know this is this, in my home this is uh, this is from a family six families who have been storing this for almost four months and just this much of space i need in my home so it doesn't smell bad inside home because we're cleaning it it doesn't take up much space inside home that so that it's not a very uh, it's not it's not very unfeasible and you see there are many participants who have been dealing with it they're cleaning their plastics oil packets polythene bags 
और आपको स्टोर करना है तीस दिन के लिए एटलीस्ट फॉर अ मंथ एंड आफ्टर दैट वी शेल बी कलेक्टिंग इट फ्रॉम यू and these are uh, students of uh, another school shrimanta shankar dev academy this poor you guys might have heard so their students of class 9 and 10 i don't know how but I, it was very inspiring from for me to see that so many students of that school have themselves come up to you know uh, support this campaign you can see these are class 9 and 10 students they are you know keeping their stuff clean and they uh, I, we are collecting from we have not collected yet will collect from that school after the school reopens the same plan that we are doing here so it's really very uh, uh, very inspiring to see them doing these things and today um, uh, suman ma'am uh, uh, if we can have uh, uh, simi ma'am talking yes. about her yes her I, was, i was just waiting for you to finish and then we, i would have asked simi so simi yes. you have been a part of the power of 300 camping could you please share your experience and views on this so that you know more and more people can participate in this simi you are muted am i audible now yes yes perfect thank you so much for having me here and thank you shaker for introducing me to this campaign okay so and you have actually pretty covered almost all the points that i wanted to speak but uh, having said that uh, for me personally first of all i want to say i'm, I'm just one of all of you who are present here today listening to this webinar the thing is it all started 3 uh, years back i was associated with a uh, project in solid waste management and somehow i i know i ended up in boragaon so for people who don't know what is boragaon it is a dumping yard okay and of course the site was not very pleasing and um, i saw the you know rag pickers who were there who were there to make a living because we all know how this entire waste thing works right so if we do not segregate somebody else has to do it and they make a living out of it and also uh, like we saw in the pictures um, i saw lots of cows and you know cattle there and they were actually trying to find some food there which is again you know living for the day end of the day we all do that isn't it so i saw the cow was trying to find some food from a plastic bag there was not much i could do about it so i came back and all through my it's, it's quite a long drive from foragon to my place in the entire way back i was thinking i was not thinking what can i do to you know kind of because this one so that i was not thinking what can i do about it i was thinking can i do something about it or would it even make a difference because i am just a drop in the ocean and the ocean is too big okay but then again a lot of contemplating and you know i just thought okay even if i am the uh, drop in the ocean i'm still the ocean so why not start somewhere rather than just not doing anything so uh, like they say when you have a thought you just happen to meet your tribe and that's how i came across a lot of people who are working in this field because most of the time what happens we want to do something uh, we know about the issue but we are, we just don't know how and that is where people like shaker and all the other people that i have met come into the picture they guide you they tell you what you're supposed to do you know so because i believe in the um, you know theory of coexistence the connectedness that we all have including humans and the other species as well and how we are responsible to create a better and sustainable world so what happens is um, you know when i got into power of 300 initially i thought who's going to wash the packets and it's going to be so difficult but you know once you once you form a habit it becomes a norm for you and then another step and another step just keeps on adding to it and then it's no longer daunting for you that's what i have uh, realized so um i the steps that i've taken yes i uh, use my own water bottle and all that shaker has already talked about i i have successfully after a lot of failures i've successfully managed my own compost and now of course i've started with the packets as well and uh, for me i think for me 
what I understand is, apart from the 10% reject waste, no waste is a waste. Actually, if you look at it, every single piece of waste is a resource if it is at the right place at the beginning. So that is where the timing has always been, uh, you know, not so good when it comes to waste. We just throw it and we think that our duty is done. It's not that. So uh, the campaign, yes, the campaign. I want more and more people to just join this campaign because uh, my motive to come here today is to just motivate you people to join because this is the way to you know kind of form a habit because we do not know problem we all know that this is the problem because awareness is there we all are on social media we all have seen videos we all know everything but we don't do anything about it not because that it, we don't want to because we don't know how to you know so first of all it is you have to be little mindful about your consumption also because you have to understand the difference between your need and your want and then you have to find the right kind of people to work with and then uh, you know take part in campaigns like this so that you take your first step the tiny step towards building a sustainable future because trust me i always say this me and many other people from my generation will still get some air and water but my grandchildren or my grandchildren's children you know they are it's going to be difficult for them and it's high time all children are taught about this all children are taught about circular economy which is which is because they are the future we might not be there to see this but they have to live right so i think i think i pretty much shaker do you think we have covered enough for this campaign or you want me to sh okay okay he says <laughs> so um uh, lovely. I believe you would like to ask me, ma'am, something. Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, yes, ma'am. Uh, as a part of the campaign, apart from oil and milk packets, ma'am, could you tell us uh, what other plastic household packages that can be recycled? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, lovely. Sure, I'll answer your question. Uh, so, I, see, I believe in live demonstrations. Okay. So, first of all, I want to clear this. When we talk about milk packets, we're not talking about this. We're not talking about tetra pack. Okay. What we are talking about is this packet. See, I have, this is my second batch. Can anyone, everyone see it? Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, this is the packet. We have cleaned it. I just cut open it. I clean it and I dry it along with my other clothes. You know, this, this packet. So, the campaign is about the oil packets and the milk packets. Okay, then like lovely, uh, you have asked me what are, have you seen these kind of soft plastics? Yeah, so you go to, you go and buy bread. Okay, you put the bread here and you, first of all, don't take this when you're going to buy bread. Okay, you, the bread can be just bought in your hand. Huh? So this kind of plastic, again, anything that is transparent. So I've carried all the groceries that I had. <laughs> So these kind of stuff, like you carry your pulses, you get your pulses, everything, all this is recyclable, provided you keep it clean. Okay. Then uh, because of this uh, lockdown and the pandemic, we have been using a lot of online stuff, right? So we order things so much. I have been doing that. I don't want to step out of home. So all the Amazon or any other packets, e-commerce packets. Okay. These are recyclable and uh, I was not very sure but then the ATAs, the ATA packets, okay, these are recyclable again because Dohati, our city has uh, a facility to do that. So we can also, all these plastics can be a part of the Power of 300 campaign. So in case you are, um, you know, segregating the uh, plastic, uh, oil and milk packets, you can also keep these packets with you. And then uh, the midway journey people will come and collect it from the school. So why I say? Because uh, after researching, we have found out that 300,000 kilograms of waste is from our city every day. And I, as a single individual, me and my family are a part of it. You know, we are responsible in some way in creating that waste. 
and the day I take responsibility for the waste I create, I think the purpose is served. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Simi. And, and now may I request Principal Ma'am to speak a few words. Anubha Ma'am. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, Shekhar. Finally get to see you. Good afternoon, Simi. Good afternoon, Suman and, the, and my student panelists. I've been there. I've been just traveling. I've just reached home, but thank God I could reach home on time. <laughs> It's been wonderful to hear you, but honestly speaking, I'm a little disappointed with the attendance. But my earnest request to the 36 who are attending, if each one of you could spread this to another 10, and those 10 could spread it to the other 10. All right? I mean, each one of us can do our bit by not only doing what they've asked us to do, but also to spread the idea. Ashmit and Lavleen, I think it will be very important that each one of you would tell the 10 and the 10 would further on tell another 10. And that's how we're going to uh, contribute to the power of 300. All right. It's a wonderful initiative. And I think every day we have lots and lots of plastic packets, which actually so far have just been going into the dustbin. But now that we've seen all your packets, Simi, all your atta packets and dal packets, I don't get milk packets, I use the tetra pack, amul tasa. So milk packets won't be there. All the other packets, immediately they're all going to be uh, stored and kept. And Lavleen and Ashmit is going to be your duty. God knows when school's going to be open. But we are going to have a competition as to which class collects the maximum packets. All right. And that is going to be your initiative. All right. No, it's a wonderful initiative. And definitely, Shekhar, we are going to do our bit in any which way that we can. And I would want to tell you that you've got a very, very good uh, environment activist with you, Simi. Because this is not only the first initiative that she's involved in, but there are many others. And she's initiated our school into these initiatives. The other was the Wormy Composting Initiative also, which was very effective. Again, that was uh, uh, distribute, I mean, how to uh, segregate, the segregate our waste. Yes, thank you. Segregate our waste. So that was a great initiative also. And I'm sure we would be a big contributor to your power of 300. Yes, it's a wonderful initiative. Thank you so much. Thank you, Suman, for conducting it. And so I much, think we would need, need to take it ahead. Definitely. Yes. And I don't know how we're going to spread it, but I think you also, to whichever classes you go, you could initiate this idea into them so that we get going. Sure. Uh, for you also, I think you tell Pavika, to whichever class she goes, let her start. Lovely yes. and Ashmit, you would need to take this initiative ahead. All right. So as and when school opens, we'll have enough packets to give to Shekhar and Singh. Sure, ma'am. Yes. Thank we you. just want, Thank you so much. Yeah, we're not asking for anything. Yes, we just want packets. Only <laughs> <laughs> give you packets. Yes? Empty. The, empty ones, yeah. Yeah, empty ones. <laughs> <packets. laughs> and very happy. Yes. Sure. No, actually, if we, uh, listening to you all, it just has to become a way of life. And I think we need reminders very often because in between we did say no to plastics. But again, if it's not. Uh, you know, we don't reiterate. Again, we get back to plastics. We had all started carrying uh, cloth bags. But I think that's again fizzled out. And now after your talk today, again, we would get a little more serious with it. But I think we need reminders very often till it becomes a way of life with each one of us. We'll make sure we keep on reminding you, ma'am. Yes, but we need that reminder very often. Because as you said... We are trying to protect this Mother Earth for our future generations, whom I'm sure we would love. And that's the only way we can show our love for them, by preserving Mother Earth. And we would need to start doing whatever little we can. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ma'am. It was an informative and interesting session. And I would like to add quite a unique idea, Shekhar. I, I, I really appreciate it and I am truly inspired by it and I'm going to follow it straight away. Thank you Thank so you much. Thank you so much. Ma'am, I just have a small request. Sure. Uh, 
if i can okay so there is actually uh, i have uh, suman ma'am i have uh, sent you over whatsapp there is a small google link google form link which mm-hmm. is like a which is like a feedback form as well feedback form as well as asking people whether they really are willing to be a part of this so if you could just share among those who have attended uh, like uh, the students especially of the school so okay. and if i could uh, for those who are not from the school if anyone is attend i would just like to uh, um, i just like to show one um, slide to them if they want to get in touch with us if you don't mind um um yeah this, um, so this is uh, this is the details of us our group uh, the facebook and instagram page this is our email id our contact number everything is mentioned so anyone who is uh, who is today attending and if not be a part of the school they can reach out uh, to us through this contact that's all i wanted to say sure shekhar will do that thank you so much shekhar simi and there's always so much we can learn from each other my sincere thanks goes to our audience who have been such active participants and with this we come to the end of this webinar i care a lot for my beautiful earth do you namaste